What's up everybody, welcome to York Reacts, and today we're going to be checking out the new Unreal Engine 5.1 features, and oh boy, I cannot wait to check this out because I know that it's going to have some cool stuff, and just to give you guys a gist of who I am and what I do, I do animation for a living, I've worked on some really cool games like Grand Theft Auto 5 and Red Dead 2, and lately God of War Ragnarok, so I've worked on some really cool games, and so this new tech is right up my alley, lately at my current job I've been using Unreal the Unreal Engine every day, so I'm really excited to see what they're going to do here. Hopefully they're going to have some new animation tools, because that's what I'm into, so let's dive in here. Let's take a look, shall we? The first major update for Unreal Engine 5 just released called 5.1, and it is a huge deal. The reason why is one word, and that is foliage. I think he said foliage, but I think what he meant to say was foliage, which, and what he means by that is just the overall, like, um plants and vegetation that are going to be spread out in a given scene. Since Unreal Engine 5 came out, it introduced a revolutionary new way of rendering geometry called Nanite. To briefly sum up Nanite, every object you see in computer graphics is composed of tiny flat planes of geometry called polygons. And the more polygons you have in your environment, the longer it will take to render. This is why video games have developed a system called a level of detail or... Now in the past or even previously, you know, currently, um, like Grand Theft Auto V, for instance, it uses LODs. And so as you're coming over a hill, it's popping up certain things. When you get closer to an object, it's going to make it more detailed. LOD sure for short. The further away an object is from the camera, the less polygons it will use to render that object. This makes games run faster since there's less polygons that have to be rendered. But it is very time consuming to create all those LODs. And it replaces LODs because it uses dynamic level detail. Wow. This means you can have an object with millions of polygons without any LODs because polygons dynamically deform, lowering the amount of polys on an object. Wow. And if you, I don't know if you caught that down on the bottom there, but it says like no polygon limits, which means that you can just have an absurd amount. Like you said, you can have millions. And he also said that there's like no LODs. There's no level of details like they had before. And that's really going to change things because... A lot of times, or in the past, like on GTA 5, for instance, or Red Dead, you had to um, pay attention to the LODs and spend a lot of time making sure that they were perfected and that they came in at the right time and that the, they were the right level of detail when you were a certain distance away and so forth. So this is going to change the game. And you know, when, I, when I'm talking about uh, Red Dead and games like that, they use their own game engine. They don't actually use Unreal. So... This Unreal Engine is kind of a new thing in a sense because these new features are, are, for the most part, not in other game engines. So this is pretty incredible stuff. A good example of Nanite in use is this desert. If I come up to Lit, Nanite, Triangles, we can see Nanite in action. Wow, Every color is an individual them. polygon, and there are millions of them incredible. without a single LOD being used. The biggest issue with Nanite is that it did not work with foliage. This means we still have to rely on level of detail for foliage like shrubs, grass, and trees. Trees generally use billboards as the lowest level of detail, <laughs> which is just a flat plane with a texture that, as you can see, does not look very nice. And, you know, this is how the old games were, and even some games currently are using this, this billboard style, where it's just an alpha channel. It's just a picture of a, you know, a side profile of a tree. And a lot of times they'll put two of them kind of mashed together like like this on top of each other to create like a you know an x shape of these two pictures here is an example of what a billboard looks like i have unreal engine 5 opened up and in this environment all the trees are using level of details wow. because that was the only that option looks pretty good now if i move my camera far away you can see that the trees uh, change lod's until stuff. they are using billboards and the transition looks pretty bad yes yeah, notice how even the shadows disappear because billboards only block light if it's facing it. Now in Unreal Engine 5.1, we finally get Nanite Foliage. To enable Nanite on Foliage is pretty simple. You wanna open up the static mesh, and within here, make sure enable Nanite support is turned on, and this is unique for Foliage. Select Preserve Area. That's how if we aren't too far away, the object won't disappear. Oh, and then press Apply Changes. I went ahead you literally press three buttons in this game engine in order to enable this amazing feature. <laughs> then did the exact same process to all the trees in this environment. Now when the camera flies away, 
There is no wow. LOD transitions or billboards. Look how good that the looks. trees Just retain the around. same quality as if they're being viewed up close. And time. the shadows do not disappear at long distances. There is no loss wow. in performance. In fact, we gained an extra five frames. <laughs> so it is more performant than LODs. So Nanite not only looks better, it runs better in certain scenarios. Here's wow. another example showing the power of Nanite. This is what it looks like without Nanite. The level of detail is noticeable because you can see that in the distance, the trees are just textures. Yeah. Also, the lighting is casting incorrect shadows. So if you, what he's saying here is if you look way back here in like the middle, you can see that they're just flat pictures. And then when you see them right up here, right in close, you can see that all the leaves and all that stuff. And this is the same environment, but with Nanite enabled. The yeah. trees far away are no longer being faked by inaccurate textures. All the trees are real geometry that exists in the world, and we did not lose any Pretty performance. Cool. I wanted to push the limit of nanite foliage, so I create a forest that is four Jesus. square kilometers. In total, there's over 100,000 trees in this environment, and I'm still getting decent performance. And as a reminder, this is all in real time. This level of density was only possible in pre-rendered movies. God. Also, it makes... It's like... It blows your mind because the tech nowadays is really changing things. Like, this is going to really change open world games for for the better and it's really going to change it a big time i'm telling you because games in the past like i told you rely on that level of detail and they rely on those polygon limits and when you're limited to that limited then you have to do all these different things to dumb things down and not do you know the as much detail as you want so this is going to really change the game i'm telling you makes life easier we don't need several different versions of an object for LODs anymore. Look On top of this. Nanite, foliage now interacts with light accurately. In real life, light passes through or bounces inside of leaves, creating subsurface scattering. Previously, this did not work with UE5's lighting, wow. but now it does. That scene almost looks completely real. This is foliage in Unreal Engine 5.0. Wow. Notice how the shadows are way too dark and unrealistic. And here's foliage in Unreal Engine 5.1. Now light is passing through the leaves and illuminating the ground, which looks a lot nicer. This and to think that they're able to do subsurface scattering on every single leaf in this entire thing is amazing. It's, abs it's absolutely mind-blowing. As a game developer myself and working on games for a long time and seeing the progression of this stuff like subsurface scattering used to be a big deal when you could do it on the ears and the skin of a character like when the incredibles first started doing it and when you did it in the program called maya it would take forever to render and to set up and stuff and here you just like click a button and turn it on and play with some settings and it's just crazy this is a subtle change but it does make a big difference they also added nanite landscapes but it is feature incomplete and still in early access Hopefully in the next version of Unreal, we get proper Nanite landscapes. Of course, foliage is not the only major change. When Unreal Engine 5 released, it introduced a new lighting system called Lumen, which gave us high performance, dynamic bounce lighting. And while it wow, was revolutionary, okay. there was one big issue, and that is it did not work with translucent materials. So glass and water reflections That's were pretty incredible. much broken. It was so bad that I was recommending people to not use glass since the reflections were completely different from the environment. Right now, I have a previous Unreal Engine version open up, and this house's and windows reflections bad. make no sense. You can see that we're getting reflection from nowhere, and same thing for this glass jar. Yeah, glass and this is the too. same environment in 5.1. But you will notice that there is no change Still yet in the reflections, good, and that's because we have to go into our hmm. post-process volume, and under reflections, lumen reflections, Make sure high quality translucency reflection is turned on. Now we get a one-to-one -one reflection with our environment. We can better see this in the glass cupboard. There is an accurate reflection there of we the go. room. We can even see the table and windows Look within that, that reflection. <laughs> the only downside is that the setting does lower performance, so there is a cost, but nothing is free and now reflections work. Water isn't broken anymore because of this new setting. Before this update to get true reflection, we would have to use planar reflection and then manually move it to lining uh, up with the water. Now I can just enable translucent to get realistic water reflections push a button. without having to use a reflection capture. This also Amazing. fixes reflections for large bodies of water. Notice how on the side of the viewport, we have weird reflections. Hmm. This is because by default, Unreal is using screen oh, space for translucent reflections. 
So that's why we get this artifacting. And to get rid of it now, just within the post-process volume, activate high quality translucency yeah. reflection. Wow. So now we get accurate, large body reflections wow. without any artifacting. Also, besides Lumen Reflections working with glass and water, Lumen Global Illumination has seen massive improvements. Lumen now has a much more accurate bounce lighting because it is bouncing light from the object surface instead of a voxel approximation. When they first showed this demo here, um, it looked incredible and it still does because of the, the bounce and the light scattering on this just What this so means good. is that our environment is indirectly illuminated more and All there's the less rubble. noise. Right here is a simple room with a point light in the old version and here it is in 5.1. The shadows are more much illuminated better, and we got rid of the weird occlusion in the corners. Here's another example of just indirect skylighting in version 5 and here it is in 5.1. You can tell that the secondary bounces are more accurate and powerful. And finally, there's a lot less noise when using emissive materials. In this example, there's a lot of noise when I move the light around. And here it is in 5.1, there is no noise. You can't even tell that this is real time. It looks path traced. Wow. Lumen wasn't the only lighting system that got approved. Really now the path the tracer well. supports sky and atmosphere. Just make sure in your post-process volume under path tracing, reference atmosphere, is enabled. Also, path tracing now finally supports decals and light functions. For those who want to use traditional light baking, the GPU okay, light mass like has seen massive improvement. First off, the light mass works. At it release, it was crashing, it was but here. now since it is more stable, the quality of the lighting is better, and the denoiser has improved in dark areas. Also, the GPU light mass now supports sky and atmosphere right out of the box. Besides lighting, there's also an interesting change to how large Unreal levels can be. In past versions of Unreal, if you are really far away from the world of origin, Unreal Engine starts to break. For example, I'm in Unreal Engine 4 and I'm very far from the origin. The widgets are starting to break apart because Unreal can't calculate what is happening that far away. Now in 5.1, the recommended area for an environment has expanded from 22 kilometers to 88 million kilometers. What? So as you can guess, we can create some pretty large worlds now. It's crazy to, the, to see the leaps and bounds they make, right? And finally, the last major change of note is animation with the sequencer. Here we go, finally. Animating anything in Unreal is done in the sequencer with keyframes. And if you want to move a sequence of keyframes earlier or later in the timeline, you have to select each one individually. For example, let's say maybe I want this ship to fly off earlier, what I'm going to have to do is hold down shift and select every single keyframe and then move them back. That's how the animation starts. The ship is already flying off. 5.1 makes this process a lot easier with layer bars, which- Awesome. So they're finally introducing layers in a system to where these are, are are like the baked animation on a on a big plane, right? It's a chunk. It's kind of like video editing, right? So you can globally edit the animations faster. And Make retiming keyframes it's a nice. breeze. Instead of selecting each keyframe individually, I can select the bar as a whole, which will move all the keyframes of the object with it. So with one click, I can retime the animation. That's how it's sooner instead of selecting all of them. Those were all the most important major changes of Unreal Engine 5.1. Wow, that's it, huh? But you know what? They're, from what they showed, it's, it's really incredible, all the different stuff. So like, you know, just to give you guys a, a gist of some of that, you know, I've been using that Unreal Engine to do some animation. And some of that stuff can be frustrating because you've got to, like he said, you got to select all those keyframes individually. And a lot of the stuff in there is not ready yet for animators. So like the Unreal Engine is, is mainly just a game engine. It, you do the animation usually inside Maya or inside Motion Builder, a different program, and then you pull it into the game engine, right? Well, now they're trying to change it to where you can do everything inside Unreal. You can animate in there, you can do effects, you can do all, everything in one package. And it's really changing everything, especially since this thing is free. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what buttons to press. And I really appreciate all your time and support. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!